Flanders, Belgium. Home to some of the most passionate cycling fans in the world. Here, cycling is more than just sport. It's a national obsession. It is also home to the race that many consider to be the most prestigious single day classic of them all. The Ronde van Vlaanderen, also known as the Tour of Flanders. We begin this episode with the end, as Hausler reflects on the agony he endured during this year's Tour of Flanders. It's the hardest race I've ever done. Like, <clears throat> just suffering. Like, I've never suffered that much because I just wanted to be there in the final, on the moor. I was getting cramps, like, in my legs and my arms. I've never had cramps in my arms before, like, cramps up here. You don't know why you push yourself that hard. Normal, I don't think a normal person can push them push themselves that hard, it's just like pain. In the days leading up to the race, Tour and Hausler feel questions about their complex relationship, with Hausler now favored over Tour to win Flanders. Do you see yourself as favorite or outsider? Outsider. Yeah? <laughs> He's a favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Who will be number one on Sunday? Between you two guys. I, I know I can win the race. Uh, yeah. I know he can win the race. Uh, yeah. We have to get as many riders over Palisberg and Koppenberg yeah. as we can from the team. Yeah. And then after that, we'll see how many riders we are, and then like, the race starts then. For you personally, Flanders or Paris? Uh, Paris for me is a big one. Yeah. And you? Flanders. Then it's easy, you know. <laughs> is there a role being the more experienced guy to? To guide Heidrich as well? No, yeah. we have Andreas Klee, that's his job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he knows everything. Yeah. They say a nickname for you is GPS Clear. Yes. <laughs> Why? Yeah, it's because I know all these roads here for from all the last 10 years. Now, will you be talking to the guys during the race? Well, I started with that five years ago in another team. Sometimes it's difficult to, to for a sport director to make a decision out of the car. Uh, very spontaneous decision. How important is it to do these recon rides? It's important because when I say something on the radio, they always have to trust me blind. It's better when, when I tell them something that they saw it once in their life and maybe remember it. So we do the last 140k from Tour of Flanders 2009. This race is really important not to know only the hill. The difficult thing is here to know the road to that hill. You can, there are so many roads in Belgium, so you have to know if you come from the left or from the right, if it's a big road or a small road. And then the day before the race, you look at the wind directions and then you can make a tactic. Just the roads, it's so special, like the, the cobbles and the small climbs and how narrow they are that it just, you can be super strong, but if you're not in the right place at the right time, if you don't know where you're going, then it's really, really difficult to, to stay anywhere near the front in the race. The race isn't on the hills itself, but it's the 5k leading into the hill, where you've got these rows that are this narrow, 200 riders. If you're not in the first 20, then you can kiss the race goodbye, because it only takes one guy to stop on the hill, and everyone goes, and that's it. Did you see the Koppenberg? It's steep as, it's like 20%. It's ridiculous. And this race will be so hard and so fast because if you win, you, you are the king of Belgium. So it will be a big, big fight. A big fight. Race day. Up until this morning, like I was always saying to myself, I'll just take it easy because everyone's been saying, Oh, you're a favourite, and journalists always been here, TV been here, then I'm a favourite and everything. Because I've been riding so good the last couple of weeks. And I didn't put myself under pressure because like, I'm only 25 and I thought the future's ahead of me and I can just wait and I'll do my, do my race, do my best, and whatever comes out comes. But this morning I was really nervous and I felt it, I felt the pressure. Like, I went to the toilet before the race like five or six times just because I was that nervous. That's the first time. 
while Hausler and the test team may be favored to win, local fans favor the quick step team with heroes Stinde Volder and Tom Boonen. Yeah. Yeah. For a lot of people, uh, this race is uh, just that important as the World Championships. Everybody's super nervous and uh, well, a little bit of stress at least. And uh, that's good because that's, that's belonging to big races like this and uh, everybody's really focused. As things get underway, fans choose their favorite place to view the race. For some, it's the comfort of the local bar. Others choose to watch the race firsthand. Gerard Vrimen, co-founder of Cervelo, is out today. Uh, he's got some people that are uh, have come over to uh, travel with him and the team, as well as some uh, Cervelo employees. Yeah, this is pretty crazy. The flag goes down and the flag goes down and right away there. I was like, what the hell? You know what? That's the first time I've ever seen the beginning of a race like this on TV, too. Oh, yeah. They don't usually show that stuff. Um, they should be coming around pretty quick. I'd say about 50k an hour, I think, by the time they're on the main straight here. Yeah. Which is a bit quick for feeding, but if they're, if they're desperate for it, then they'll take it. They'll have to slow down and grab one. We'll make our way over to the Mur if we can. But of course, there's 120,000 people who do the same, so you have to just make sure you pick the right roads and leave on time. You can see the race, you know, two, three, four times if you're lucky, and if you know where you're going. So that's a nice thing with organizing a group and you have experienced people and you see so much more of the race. women's team races Flanders a few hours ahead of the men. The team is going strong and finishes second later that day. Maybe 15 riders. Jean-Paul, Jens and Mark the mechanic follow the men closely with Andreas Clear on the race radio. We have to fucking concentrate now. It will be a hard work now. Good luck guys. So save now energy and try to get so far as possible over the two climbs and then ride like hell. But it's not until they've hit 200 kilometers with 60 to go that things really start to heat up. Though nothing is decided on the Koppenberg, this brutal climb will, as always, splinter the bunch. You want me to ride on the front, Andreas? You're going to fuck now. I can do some on the front before the mule. No way. I don't want to see somebody riding in the front. We are stronger than the rest, but we do our race. We're not riding now. It's fucking long to the finish line. Stay cool and try to survive. Everybody has pain now. It's also like a mental, like you have to say to yourself, it's not hurting, it's fun, or think something positive or whatever. Just, it's pretty much the guy who can suffer the most wins. Belgian Stin de Volder launches his attack. He will not catch the ball of that. Yeah. He's driving. Yep, yeah, he drives. We ride for seconds, that's right. 59 seconds is it on the, the three chasers and the group on 110. Conclusion. To the delight of the Flemish fans, De Volder wins the race for a second year in a row. The battle is now for second place. We're going to sprint for Tor, and then with 1.2 k to go, Tor just yells at me and attack. No, I attacked, but my legs were just like, it was worse than San Remo. Who's this? Heimlich. Yeah. No, I knew I was getting slower and slower and kept looking behind and... Don't fucking look back, right! Right! right. Full, full gas, full gas. Don't look back. <laughs> Again! Go, go, go! That's Heinrich, fun. don't look back! Go, 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 go now! Go, go, go! But I was looking back and he was dying and I could see him coming. But, um, yeah, 
Got to the finish, and it was good. Second, eh? Second is not so bad. There's no rush off. In instant replay, Jean-Paul and Jens learned that Tour crashed hard, only 50 meters from the finish. Oh, who is it? Ah, fuck! Thomas? Yeah, it's You catch them from the back. Sprint after a really hard race, the hardest race in the world is never just straight. I don't know what happened with Thor, he crashed hard 50 meters before the finish line. First we will see what happened with Thor. If if you say, come on, we drink a beer, we will have a beer. Jens, good morning. 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 Good Good morning. 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 Good yeah. They're just so strong. And like we just ride as a team, everyone's sacrificed themselves for the other. And then Sunday pay to obey. For sure we're gonna be up there too. Because the team is so strong. Yeah.